Hey guys, Brian with WorkshopAddict.com. Have you ever used something that you've thought, hey, this is completely a game changer? Why isn't everybody using it? Why is this not the gold standard? And I feel that way about this Lube Shuttle grease gun. It's actually not the grease gun, although the grease gun is made in Germany. I like that. Uh, it's the way the grease goes into the grease gun and that might be what's holding it back, but that is the game changer here. And I want you to watch this whole video if you would. Comment to me at the end if you like this or not, and if you think it's a game changer, and then let me know what you think is holding this back from coming throughout the United States. It is in Europe, and it is taking over. At this point, I will tell you that you can get this from their website that I'll link below, and it is coming to ACE in 2020. So what do we have here? Basically, just a grease gun. The difference that we have is that this tube that makes it look like a normal grease gun is basically just for protection. Right now, I have some of the Lube Shuttle Molly grease in here. That's it. That's how this disconnects. So you have a cap that I filled up with grease that can go over top of this. And unfortunately, that's going to make more of a mess than anything else. If I want to change grease over to, let's use this guy because I'm going to do some marine grease next. I got the grease. All I need to do is push it up slightly. And if this grease was used, I could use the end. Get in here, push it up slightly. So we have some grease sticking out. Normally, you would keep this cover on. We put this in. Screw it back on, and we are set. We just changed greases. We didn't make a mess. We have nothing on the outside of the tube, nothing here, nothing on our hands. The only old grease that we have in here is what's left in the tube. So let's get that out. That's a Molly grease. As soon as that turns a dark blue, which is right there. We are now into the new grease. Simple as that. There's nothing else going on with this. It's sweet, it's easy. So let's go put some bearing grease into our marine trailer. So this grease gun is rated for 4,350 PSI, which is probably what's holding it back slightly from using it on large heavy duty equipment. Uh, but it's going to be perfect for at home. You can see we have quite a bit of grease in here, uh, but I like to keep these greased up pretty good. The grease seems to come outside of these and hang in this outside tube while you work to fill that center cavity. But it's one of those things that you don't grease every day. And when you do use grease, I want to use marine grease. So I switch the tube out, move over, and this allows me to have simple, easy changes rather than multiple different grease guns. Now, anyone here who watches the channel just laughed at me saying this allows me not to have multiple grease guns because you guys know that we have a ton of grease guns or a ton of different tools and we firmly believe in that. But for the homeowner or for the construction guy or anyone who wants to use different greases and wants to clean up this mess, this works. Why couldn't we do the same thing with a Milwaukee grease gun? Or why couldn't we do the same type of system with any other type of grease gun that we have and just make our grease cartridge changes much cleaner? So if you're that guy that doesn't have multiple grease guns, you just slide this guy out, cover your grease, and you'll remember we had a bunch of molly in the top of this that's going to make it more of a mess than what it would have been. Still nothing, right? We push that up slightly. Slide it back in. Screw it into place and we're set. So the downsides to it that I see is most people are going to beat the crap out of this plastic end. And as this tube gets less full with grease, this gets more flexible and pliable. So it's hard to possibly remove it. Simple solution, just remove the cover on the top. That allows you to completely get your hand up here 
and remove it, no issue. You don't need to have it in that tight, first of all. Next, you, if you have the pistol grip, lever grip, or any of them, the way that this works, you need to have the piston to come all the way back. So when you look at how this operation goes, you'll actually feel it. If you start taking short strokes with the pistol grip and don't let that piston come all the way back to grab more grease, you will not get any grease coming out and you will feel it in the lever. All you have to do is take a full stroke with this, no issue. You can think about how it works and the dynamics of it. You'll completely understand why that has to happen. Other than that, this is simple. I do miss my lock and lube grease tip on the end. You just get used to certain things. That's one of them that I really like. The downsides to it, right? Here's where we want to talk about why hasn't this taken over. Currently, you can only get your grease from Lube Shuttle. And while they have some good grease and they have different kinds, they're working on getting other manufacturers to fill these tubes. But as you can think about, there are a ton of companies out there making a boatload of money off the standard grease cartridges and why are they going to up and change and then have everyone say, we got to change grease guns. I think you're going to see that with some of the Bosch stuff coming out for the grinders too. They're going to have to make something backwards compatible. You're going to have to come together to make something that's going to work in both situations. And that would take this to the next level because once people started to see a, hey, I can use this in this situation, but if I had this sort of grease gun and I had this type, it would be a lot easier and a lot cleaner. I could just pull one out, put another one in. Even if it's not changing greases, it's just refilling a cartridge. Boom, done, moved on. And if you do it correctly, you don't have any issue with airlock. A lot of people seem to get airlocks in a lot of different grease guns and it's just a matter of how they put it together, what they do to fix it. If you're a little diligent with this, it doesn't happen. I like it. I like everything about it. I'm very, very interested in hearing what you have to say below. They need to come up with something that's 10,000 PSI. That's going to work for excavators. Uh, if you had this in your service truck, simple, easy move on, do it quick. You're not covering yourself in grease to do it. And when you pull the tube out, it's not full of grease either. That's one of my main things is just ease of cleanup. So if you're on the road, hands aren't covered in grease, you can handle this. This is a completely used model. I have no issue of where I put my hands. I like that. I think you guys will too. So if you're a homeowner that doesn't grease a lot, because let's face it, ball joints, all that stuff is, seems to be going to a more sealed technology. Heck, even lawnmowers, they're saying that the technology is good enough right now on sealed bearings that they don't have to put any Zerks on lawnmowers. I don't know if I believe that or if that's a cost savings or if it's just the simple fact that people don't grease them. So if you don't grease them, they go bad. What do you guys do? Same with changing oil, right? Got to change oil. Fresh oil is what keeps an engine going. Love to hear your comments below. I'll have links in the description for this. As always, guys, we appreciate your time. Please give us a like, subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.